Hey guys, Kingpin here. Welcome to the Orchid City Zoo. In case you're new to the series or the channel in general, this is our zoo where we can build pretty much whatever we want. We're not tied down to any specific theme. This zoo is meant to be a dream zoo. We've spent a majority of this series so far building for Asian animals, mainly in our new exhibit called Asia Quest. The first animal you're going to see in Asia Quest is actually the critically endangered red panda. Our red pandas, which are named Dali and Dama, have an incredibly basic exhibit, but it gives off an incredible first impression for the zoo, and Asia Quest in general. It looks really sleek. Dali and Dama are neighbors with four Asian small clawed otters, about to be five, but we'll get to that towards the end of the video, or perhaps in the next episode. Our Asian small clawed otters enjoy swimming in their deep dive pool, they have plenty of enrichment items to keep them entertained all day, and they also have each other. It's incredibly rare to see one of our four otters just off on their own. They really enjoy being social, playing, and interacting with the world around them. The majority of Asia Quest actually comes from our Mega Build, which we started about two episodes ago, and it's coming along incredibly nicely. It's already home to three different species, soon to be four by the end of this episode. Stay tuned to see what it turns out to look like. The first animal to call the Mega Build home is the critically endangered Red Crown Crane. These guys make a killer first impression, and their association of water also makes them a very good animal to have first, since it's really eye-catching to the guests. They share an exhibit with the Japanese macaque. It's an incredibly clever and intricate design, because the only way the macaque can get up to their indoor viewing area is by a climbing ramp, which the cranes cannot access. If you have a good idea for a name for one of our animals from Asia Quest, feel free to leave it in the comments below, and who knows, you just might make it into the next video. In the very last episode, we actually made an exhibit for the Binturong, and we have two of them here in this exhibit. They really, really enjoy sleeping. I'd say that's what they do probably 90% of the time. Luckily their animations when they're asleep are really cute, so I guess I'll let it slide. Hopefully the guests like it too. If you guys enjoyed today's video, please don't forget to like and subscribe. We're on the final push to a thousand, we're less than 50 subscribers away, and I can't be more grateful for the channel progress. There's a lot more to come from the Orchid City Zoo, so I hope you stick around. Originally I had intended to build for the Gariel today, right here in this exhibit. However, their hitboxes are a little bit larger than expected, so I had to scrap the idea, unfortunately. What we're going to be doing instead is taking the Gariel's would-be habitat and merging it with the Sun Bear, which was right next to it. The Sun Bear needs 920 square meters of land and a little bit of climbing space, so they could certainly appreciate the extra room. Keep your eye out for these three items during the video, too, and comment your times if you actually manage to find them. One of them is going to be easy, the other medium, and the third hard. The only rule is they will never appear during a time lapse where the footage is sped up. Outside of these three main windows is going to be the bulk of their exhibit. This was originally planned to be for the Sun Bear, so it really works out. Where the Gariels were going to go is going to be their indoor exhibit, so the Sun Bears can get away from the sun, ironically, and the guests. I have absolutely no plans for the Orchid City Zoo to expand left past this point. This means we're going to be using this natural mountain that's already here as the backwards barrier of this enclosure. We've been including really small areas of elevation all over this zoo, mainly for the guests, but we're going to do it for the sun bears too. I don't want this exhibit to be too flat. I want them to have a little bit of high ground, a little bit of low ground, and a little bit of really high ground since they really like climbing. Overall, this is going to be a slightly elevated exhibit, but nothing too much. Sun bears are an animal I admittedly don't know a whole lot about, but apparently they can deep dive in this game and really like water, so we're going to give them a little pond. Nothing much, but they'll enjoy it. Like I said before, the Gariel's would-be habitat is actually going to be the Sun Bear's indoor enclosure. This is going to be an area where they can get away from the guest, to their knowledge there's going to be one-way glass, and just come in and relax. Their bedding's going to be in here, they're going to have a lot of enrichment items, so I want it to feel really cozy. For that, we're going to go above and beyond this and give it a little bit of a cool design. For doing that, I'm just going to take the exact same material that the wall is originally built out of and just come out and layer it a little bit. Playing a game like Minecraft so much, like I have in the past, really helps with this design idea, because effectively all you're doing is taking the wall and kicking it out a little bit. This adds depth, and depth makes any build look a lot better. The most basic form of this is simply adding a window. 
Think about a build that you recently made. I bet adding a window would make it look a lot better if you haven't already. It really helps just break up the bareness of any given wall. To get this triangular effect, I couldn't really go on the grid because it was off-centered with the piece that I already used, so I simply just rotated a rectangular piece 90 degrees to make it look like a triangle. Then I deleted the piece that was on the grid, made this pop out to avoid that annoying glitch, and voila! Coming on the inside of their indoor viewing enclosure, we're simply just going to be adding two 4x4 thin glass panes. This is a really nice effect, and some bears don't get stressed out, so they're good. Midway through the build, I thought it would be a really cool idea if we could have a flowing river from up here that comes from the top of the mountain and leads into a waterfall at the base of the Sun Bear's enclosure. Since Sun Bears really like water, I thought this was a great effect, but I didn't really know how to smooth out the mountain. That's when I had the idea of using the Add Terrain feature to get these squares in, then use the Smooth Terrain feature to kind of get rid of the rough edges and make it look a little bit more natural, since this isn't Minecraft and rocks typically aren't squares. After we got our natural barrier done, naturally, it was time to get the artificial one done. For this, I'm using a simple wooden barrier, mainly because it's the exact same one we used for the red crown crane and the macaques. I really like the simple effect of this wood. Matter of fact, I think it looks very acceptable. I typically don't like the natural in-game barriers, but I like this one. I can't explain it. I'm actually really happy with this. It's just the right amount of space for our single sun bear. This exhibit ends up being probably my favorite I've ever done, so be sure to stick around till the end. Yeah. This is a sun bear, and you'll probably notice two things. They're really small, being the smallest species of bear, and they have incredibly large claws relative to their body size. They use these to climb trees. Don't forget, the very first thing you should always do when a new animal is in an exhibit is check the traversable area. This way, if you built something the animals might not be able to fit in, you'll know immediately before you make an even bigger mistake and detail that area up even more. Looks like we did alright though. Our traversable area is good, and the sun bear can go everywhere in the exhibit. The next thing that I always personally like to do after checking the traversal area is getting the terrain requirements done. This is a very easy step. Usually all it accounts for is adding more soil and short grass instead of the long grass which spawns by default. After that, I like to go into the enrichment. Sun bears actually have some enrichment items that I've never used before, such as this hammock, and when I would place it down, it actually kind of destroyed the terrain around it, so I had to find a really creative place to put it, so I ended up deciding right smack dab in the middle of the exhibit right behind where their waterfall is eventually going to go. Bears of all species are incredibly intelligent animals, and they need a lot of entertainment. I added wind chimes, scratching posts, balls for them to play with, little food stands, kind of scratching posts, a ton of different things that they can enjoy. They'll never be bored in here, especially since this bear is a solitary animal. That's a very big deal. Think about our red pandas, or our black and white rough lemurs, or our Asian small clawed otters. Pretty much every animal that we have in this zoo so far is extremely social. These solitary sun bears are the complete opposite. He's not going to have a friend in this exhibit. It's barely big enough space-wise for him alone. So even if we wanted to add a second one, we realistically probably can't fit it. So we're going to have to make sure he's never bored so he doesn't get stressed out in here. Hopefully he enjoys it. I have a feeling he will. Earlier in the video, we discussed adding a little bit of elevation here and there, and how it makes your exhibits look a lot better. This is true, but there is another step that you have to do in order to make it look truly perfect. Think about any hillside you've seen in real life. That's not just a very slight incline. Most hills have exposed rock and dirt, because this is what's actually making the hill. If you think about it, a hill is effectively just a rock with some dirt on it in real life. So why not try to reflect that in the game? In order to be holding all of this dirt and soil back, we're going to be making a small retaining wall out of some rocks. Now the trick to making this look good is use a variety of different kinds. What I really like to do is use the faux rocks from the aquatic pack. However, in order to do that, you have to have the entire exhibit not really looking natural necessarily, a lot of more concrete and barriers instead of regular rocks and foliage. Those work really well for animals that are aquatic, which is why they came in the aquatic pack. Things like seals, sea lions, African penguins in the Africa pack that just recently released would be perfect for that. But for our purposes today, we're going to be using all rocks that come from the base game. A mix of temperate, 
tropical, and even some tundra and mossy ones. If you mix these rocks that all look relatively similar in shade together, it gives a much more promising effect, because in real life, some rocks are weathered, some are different color, some might be darker or lighter than others. It's really a variety. There's not necessarily different species of rocks, however the amount of time a rock has been under fire by the weather and just eroded makes it look a little different from the ones around it. So try to reflect that realism by mixing up the shape and the type of rocks. Get that variety of color in, get that variety of shape, and your builds are going to look more natural in no time. It's a really easy way to take your builds to the next level. Another thing I really like to do in habitats, and have really tried to do a lot more lately as I've gotten a lot better at the game in the recent months, is try to have a lot of moving components in a build. And I'm not just talking about having a lot of animals. I like to have animated things in the build, using these special effects. The easiest one to incorporate into any build, besides something that lives in the middle of the desert, like a dromedary camel, is actually the waterfall. And a really good tip I have for these things is whenever you're placing this, this is the one exception that I always say to build with the pause menu on. I actually really like the idea of building this with the live on, because you can actually see the effects as you're building them. They don't necessarily only start playing as soon as you start. You can have it on and just carry it around. It's actually really satisfying, and it makes it a lot easier to tell the angles in which you're building at. Yeah. Our exhibit's coming along incredibly nicely, and the sun bear is already really happy here. The only thing he needs is plants, and luckily, sun bears are a species in this game which need a lot of plant coverage, which means we can detail really heavily. Building for animals that don't like a whole lot of plant coverage is always a lot trickier, because you have to get really creative with the details that you add. However, building for an animal that likes plants a lot, like pretty much any bear species, except the eventual polar bears when they get added in the arctic pack, it's really easy to build for them, since plants are incredibly easy to detail with. Being easy to detail with, of course there's a way that I personally like to do it to make it even easier. The first thing that I always do in terms of my plants is I always detail the water first. Detailing the water is completely different, as you don't just have plants floating around. Plants are either attached to rocks on the bottom, or pretty much anything on the side. After you get this done, I then like to go onto the bigger plants. These are your giant trees, palm trees, oak trees, birch, pretty much any species that the animal likes. These are the biggest plants, so it's really easy to place them down first and place all the smaller plants around them. After that, I like to detail the walls of the exhibit with moss, maybe some ivy, or little grasses on the side. This way, the walls don't look as bare. After you have your water detailed, your big plants in, and the walls of your exhibit look good, I then like to move on to the rocks. Detailing rocks of your exhibit with some plants that look like they could naturally grow on them is a really good way to break up the gray color. Because sometimes, unless you're using the faux rocks, rocks can look a little bit boring in this game. So adding some moss, maybe some plants that grows on them, is an incredible way of making them look a lot more highly detailed. Speaking of highly detailed, I'm going to let you in on a secret that I use to make exhibits look that much more realistic. Try and imagine where your animal is going to be walking the most in your exhibit. Perhaps you have a path in between some rocks like we do right now. Maybe you have a little path over to an enrichment item. Maybe you have some area where the animal is going to be enticed to go. Maybe his food is over there. Maybe his water tray. Who knows? But wherever you think your animal is going to be walking the most, replace that with the light soil. This way, it's going to look like the plants all around there have died or been matted down because you have a bear walking on them constantly. This is a more realistic effect, because not everywhere is just going to be complete grass. After you do this, place different plants above where the short grass or long grass terrain is. This is going to do two things. One, it's going to make it a lot more realistic, and two, it's also going to add depth. We talked about this earlier, but it always makes builds look better. And it doesn't just have to be for buildings. This adds texture to the ground, and it gives it a lot more character. Just look right now. This looks like normal grass, despite us using three different plant species in there. We have some ferns, we have some saltwort, and we even have some red oak grass that's dry. It breaks up the color, and it makes it a lot less green. The reason I said to put the light soil where the animal travels is because that then tells you exactly where not to put this grass. Because if the animal is traveling over that area constantly, it's going to have matted down all the plants and it's not going to need plants right there. This way, it's effectively doing a paint map, where you put the soil, that's where you don't put the plants. 
where you have just normal grass laying over, that's where you detail it more. This is especially easy in North American habitats, or effectively any animal you can use buffalo grass for. Buffalo grass is really simple, but it legitimately might be my favorite plant to use in the entire game. Every single habitat that I can possibly use it for, I do, even if the animal sometimes doesn't like it. It's just such a nice detailing block that you really can't go without it once you get used to using it. It just makes the normal grass look so much better and highly detailed. Really recommend it if you guys don't often use it already. It looks like our sun bear's all tuckered out after a full day of exploring his brand new enclosure, and I have to say, I think he's really happy here. I hope our guests are just as happy with this exhibit as I am, because I think this turned out really nicely. I'm just hoping they have an ample view, but they really should. You can see him from your indoor, you have a habitat monitor so you can even watch him at home, and you have the three main viewing windows, which you can easily see him from enjoying his outdoor climbing section, his little pond, his enrichment items, and everything else he likes to enjoy himself with. Now that our sun bear is finally happy, we need to make sure our guests are too, because if it starts raining, they certainly won't be, so we're gonna need a roof. In the last episode, I decided to use these vertical wood planks. I think they really look nice in this build, and they match really good with this European rock texture that we've been using. So I'm simply just gonna follow the path that we've already made on the grid, and just fill in all of the gaps. We can come in later with some more European rock and add some layering and depth, but for now, we just need to get this roof on so we know exactly what we're working with. I decided to come to the roof and add on a little texture to try and make this look more like a castle. I really thought this would be an interesting effect and give Asia Quest a lot more character. Trying to make it look like a rundown Asian castle instead of just a regular building in North America is certainly going to make this stick out among our guests. And for a first impression exhibit in the zoo, which this is, this is the first major area you're going to arrive to in Orchid City Zoo, this is really important that we capture. So I figured we need to give it something unique that no other exhibit in this zoo, or any other zoo that a guest has likely seen, and give it some character so they're going to really remember it. Lastly, we came on the inside, added some education boards, donation bins, security posts, pretty much every facility that we could possibly add to give that much more extra detail. A habitat webcam was a great idea. We threw a speaker down, some benches, trash cans to avoid litter, everything to make this exhibit as homey as possible and to make sure the guests don't absolutely destroy it. Alright guys, we're almost done. Now we just have to actually turn on our education boards. We have a couple for the macaques right here. Second one done. I think this one's a sun bear. We should have another sun bear right across the way. Yep, right here. After this, it should be our binturong right along this side. We have our conservation boards already right there. Alright, I think we're good. Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. The Orchid City Zoo's newest addition, our female sun bear, 
whose name is yet to be determined, don't forget to leave a comment, has adjusted incredibly well to her new living situation. She has one of the biggest habitats in the zoo so far, aside from our macaques and red-crowned cranes, who have to share the habitat. This sunbear's living in luxury. She is very happy, and it's really obvious to tell. Asia Quest is turning out better than I ever could have expected it to. Thank you guys for the continued support. Aside from leaving comments trying to find names for our various animals in the zoo, especially our sun bear, don't forget to timestamp if you manage to find the three hidden items I put in this video. I promise they're all in there if you look hard enough. Community engagement is really big for me when growing this channel. I really like talking to you guys and seeing what you can do. In saying that, recently, we've made a Discord server, and there's already about 20 of you in there. I really enjoy seeing your builds too, because I'm not the only one who can build in this game. A lot of you are much more talented than I am. The Discord server currently is and will forever remain free. I don't believe in charging to see your guys' builds. You shouldn't have to pay for me to help critique your work on a personal level. However, I am considering making a YouTube membership program, which effectively means you guys could pay up to $2 a month, and then I would friend you on Xbox or PlayStation if you're on that as well, and then you could actually appear walking around in the zoo in my videos. That's still all really up in the air. To be completely honest, that was off script, and I just thought of that while recording this. I actually really like the idea, though. Link to the Discord is in a community post I made about a week ago, and it'll probably be in the description of this video, if I don't forget. It's about 3am when I'm uploading this. Work has been really hectic, long story short. But there's a light at the end of the tunnel. It's about over now and I can get back to a normal upload schedule. That's it for now. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Kingpin out.